Hello, this is Broer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Civilization VI. We're going to be playing as a Manator today. Uh, I'm not sure what victory we're going to go for. We'll get into that once we get into the game and see how things look. But I'm excited to get things started, so let's get right into it. All right, here we are. There's a Manator. Uh, we can actually change her logo, but we'll leave it at the default for now. I'm okay with that. Um, we're going to be playing, obviously, on Deity. No changes there. Game speed standard, no changes there. Uh, I thought about going Terra Map, and actually, I did try Terra Map, I'll be honest. Um, I tried it twice, and both times, we had a rival civilization within, like, five tiles of our starting city. And that's just spells disaster, quite frankly. I didn't like it. It was too close. Um, so... We're not going to do Terra. I don't know if you guys know if there's any bugs with Terra or if it's just a smaller map and just doesn't work for this number of people. Let me know in the comments below if you do know that. We're going to go back to a contents map. That should be fine. Other than that, no game modes turned on because I haven't played a Manator since the very beginning when she first came out. And I know there's been some changes to the game since then. So we're going to play her basically vanilla. Uh, but there's the game random seed and the map random seed if you guys want to play along. I do have some mods installed, by the way. I went ahead and decided to install some mods, one of which you're about to see here in just a minute because one of them is the, the loading screen will give us more information so I don't have to go to the Civilopedia. I thought that was a helpful mod. Every mod I have installed is completely um, UI and cosmetic. Nothing that's going to change the gameplay itself. Just make it easier for us to play the game. And that is the goal. We'll get into that here in just a minute. Let's go. All right, the land of the bow. That definitely tells us a bit more about what we're going to be playing with. Um, so here we are. We got four bonuses here. I'm glad I can see the two bonuses at the bottom here. Thank you, modders. Uh, we've got the Kandake of Moreau, plus 20% production towards all districts. Already huge deal. And then rising to plus 40% if there's a Nubian Pyramid adjacent to the city center. So we're going to want our pyramids adjacent to our city centers everywhere we possibly can. Uh, because 40%, I mean, that's like half the time to build... A district that is insanely fast and that's going to be uh really really useful for us going forward and that lasts the entire game uh hint hint alexander how about you get your stuff to last the entire game please uh, then we have the tassetti here plus 30 percent production towards range units that's all range units that's not just the patati archer that's also uh field cannons machine guns everything um, all range units gain plus 50 percent combat experience mines over strategic resources provide plus one production Always good to have. Mines over bonus and luxury resources provide plus two gold. Well, there you go. Some of our gold problems with some, having lots of units can be partially solved with that bonus as well. This bonus, again, lasting the entire game. <clears throat> Alexander. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm salty about Alexander. Um, Patati Archer here, though, is the only thing of all of her bonuses that does not last the entire game, but it is a ridiculously strong unit. It starts off in the ancient area, um, replaces the Archer. Archer normally has 25 strength. This one has 30 range strength, uh, and they can upgrade to the crossbow. Now, also, this also has more movement, which is awesome. With that, um, more movement, and then the extra combat experience, we're going to be moving these things around all over the place and possibly getting them up to that double shot promotion pretty quickly, and they're just going to be tearing things up, hopefully. Uh, then we have the Nubian Pyramid, which is comes in the ancient era, um, and it can be built on the desert hills, desert floodplains, or just straight, straight desert tiles. So we want to put as many of our cities next to a desert tile as possible so that we can at least build that one Nubian pyramid next to our city if we can. can. That's that's going to be the goal. Uh, and then we want to surround that with as many districts as possible. Um, get plus two faith and plus two food. Gets an extra food if it's next to the city center, which we're going to be targeting. Can get us three food and two faith from the get-go. And then, of course, you get the bonuses from the districts that you surround it with. So if you surround it with an industrial zone, you get plus one production. If you get it next to a campus, you get plus one science, things like that. So we can definitely play around with that quite a bit. One of the other mods I have is the map tax, uh, better map tax. So I don't think that's the exact name of it, but it's, it's going to give us the ability to plan out those adjacencies a little bit better and see what those bonuses are going to look like. Let's get into this. Oh, look at this great start. Already next to a desert, we are probably going to want to be surrounding this desert with cities so that we can keep take advantage of all those Nubian pyramids where possible. Um... All right, sorry about that. I had to put a quick pause in the video. Hopefully, I got everything cut together okay. Because um, I had to jump up and then I had to cut out some video. Uh, anyway, so here we are. Uh, we got deserts, so that's good start. Uh, we can definitely surround this desert with cities and things like that. That's going to be really good for us. 
And we've got some luxuries next. We've actually got two luxuries here. We've got some, actually three. I'm sorry, I forgot oranges were luxury as well. We got three luxuries next to us, a four food tile right next to us, a couple, we got a one food, three production tile, which is really nice. And we're next to a river. That's not bad. We got a three food, one gold tile over there. It's not a bad start. I could see an argument for moving up to this tile so that we can have double production in the city to begin with. But I don't know if that's any different than staying where we're at and just getting an extra production from a tile. Like if we moved up here, destroyed this forest and built our city there, yeah, we get an extra production in the city, but this tile right here has one less production, which we could just stay here and get the one more production there. I think it's a wash. And so for that reason, I think staying next to the river, city next to a river is usually a pretty good idea. Uh, I think that'll be good. And we've just put our um, pyramid here and figure out what we want to do from there. I think either option could be be good. Let me know in the comments below what you would have done. But I think these are both identical choices. And we don't want to move back here because that will get us away from the desert. And we don't want to move down here because that'll get us away from the food for food. Although this is not a bad one either. Um, so I think stay settling in place. Before we do that, though, we're going to move the warrior up. I can move up here, but with forest and hills, I don't think we're getting any more vision. So let's move over this way. I mean, another good city spot over on this side of things. One, two, three, four. So possibly, oh, we could actually put our second city on this Plains Hill. And I think that's actually a really good spot. Let's settle this city in place. We will remove the woods, which I don't like, but it's going to be okay. And I don't think, it, I think it was our best option. Right away, we know we're going to be putting a... Uh, Nubian Pyramid here. And there's the bonus from that extra mod that I have. That's the map tax, which is going to tell us exactly what these bonuses are as we start planning out these districts and things. Uh, if I were to go in here and show you, here's the mods I got in use. I've got better builder charges. Can actually show us how many charges our builders have right next to them. So I don't have to keep clicking on them. That's helpful. Espionage screen. We'll see what that looks like. I haven't really tried it out yet. Uh, better loading screen. We just saw, saw that. Better report screen, which will just give us more reports and better reports and things like that, which is going to be useful. Better trade screen. I haven't tried this out, but we're going to try that a little bit. Detailed map text. That's the one I just showed you. And then extended policy cards. Well, actually, somebody mentioned this in the comments, actually. I think it was Telrenar, one of you guys. I can't remember. I apologize for not giving the credit to where it's due. But um, it's going to give us the actual information about what that policy is going to give us. So it's going to make our not having to do math in our heads and stuff like that. It doesn't add anything to the policy cards. It doesn't like make them better or anything like that. It's just gives us the information that we is useful to have, you know. Um, other than that, I do have the red mod pack in here, completely cosmetic, just because Quick Deals is in here, which is going to help us to do trades a little bit easier. Again, all just cosmetic, really. Nothing's going to change the gameplay itself. And then we've got some simple UI adjustments from Sucratact here. And I think that's it. So a lot of just UI ones that I thought looked useful. We may or may not like all of them, but for now, we're going to start with them all and see what it looks like. Let's get into the research. Uh, we do have irrigation thing, uh, things that can be improved by irrigation all around us, right? All of these are irrigation bonuses. So getting one of those would probably be a really good idea. There's the quick deals, by the way. That's pretty cool. Um, we also want to start working towards our Patati archers at some point. We'll start with pottery. Just be able to, to plan towards irrigation because we know it's going to be a big deal for us uh, and go from there. Um, as far as this Nubian pyramid here, if I were to plan out a few map tags here, let's say if I put like a commercial hub here, for example, boom, we got one gold there. Although I do like the idea of a aqueduct and a, um, industrial zone, but I don't really have an easy way to do that. Uh, so if we did that, oh, can we do an aqueduct over here? Um, can we? Aqueducts. Can it be next to it? Yeah, it can be next to an oasis. So, actually, what that means is actually, let me delete that. If I were to put the aqueduct further away somehow, no, it has to be next to the city, though, right? Between the city and the and the oasis, so that's not going to work. Um, I don't know. Probably put like a campus over here or something like that. Doesn't really matter what order and things like that. We put a campus there, for example. And let's play, we put a holy site here because we're probably going to be doing some holy sites. Something like that. As you can see, it starts to develop this Nubian pyramid out quite nicely. I'm not saying this is exactly how we're going to do it. I think the commercial hub is the only one I'm probably going to put where it, where it says. 
But as you can see, we can start getting some really good adjacencies for this Nubian pyramid right away. Um, and we can start doubling up too. Like we could put something here, put the city here, put in a Nubian pyramid over here or something like that, and already start using some of Moreau's districts to help boost this city's um, Nubian pyramid. So it can add up pretty quickly, but we'll play around with that some more later. I'm going to get a scout because we know we're on a continent's map. I know some people don't like early scouts. I like them because I like to be able to find things and get those civic boosts and things like that for finding continents and other city-states and civilizations. Um, let's go ahead and go up on this hill. It's going to give us some good vision, although I expected this to be the end of this. It should be okay still. I still think a city here is the right move, just to make sure I'm not... Yeah, I can't put a city there. Just making sure. Um, so we want to get these cities as close as possible, I think to each other to be able to fit as many cities as we can in here. I really think just overlapping the about the the, uh, the bonuses, the adjacency bonuses is going to be a huge win for us. And then you're going to put like a Nubian pyramid in one of these two spots. Possibly actually down here because then we can put its own um, a campus right next to it, which will boost you know, whatever district we have over here, things like that. And we can, we can kind of build up on some of these boosts. So something like that will probably be good. Turtles. We've got four luxuries, like, right away. One, two, three. Uh, this is just regular floodplains. Four. So we're probably going to put the other city right here, is my guess. Uh, which means it's... Pyramid will have to be one of these two spots. Probably the one. Probably here would be okay. Although it would have limited districts next to it. But this allows us to put a commercial hub right next to it. I could also put it over here. And put another district there that can get it some adjacency. Something like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it here for now. But I think I might move it to the south once we see some more of what's going on down there. But as you can see, we're already getting some nice, decently nice Nubian pyramids right away. Although they do have, these two have a negative of not being able to build something on this desert oasis tile. So it's one less adjacency they're going to be able to get. Got maze down here. Got some more desert already. Uh, do I want to build on this Plains Hills instead? I think that is actually what I want to do. So we're going to delete you. And we're going to build on... Plains Hills to get that boost from that city right away. Plus, it'll give us the um, ability to uh, preserve these floodplains for other bonuses uh, later on. Which does mean we could put a dam down here somewhere and get us a nice industrial zone. Okay, well, first barbarians. Lots of floodplains down here. Goodness. Hmm. All right, let's start moving you back. Can we chase that scout? I don't think we can. I think we need to just go over here. Okay, Congo. Second time we've had Congo right next to us in a game. We'll see what that means for us. The one good thing about us having a desert bias uh, is that a lot of other civilizations don't want to do settle near the deserts. So it gives us the opportunity to take those spots ourselves. We've already got another. Are you kidding me? What is this? Is this another civilization already? Why are we so... I did the wrong size map, didn't I? I didn't increase the map size to large when I moved the pop number of people up to eight. Oh my goodness, that's what's going on. I really like this start too. But this is way too close for comfort. Galls. Oof. Oof. Those guys can be scary. Look how close we are. All right. Sorry about that. I had to go quit, put a quick pause in the video to make sure that... I went back and watched my recording <laughs> to make sure... I did set the right map size and everything like that. And I did. I set it on a standard map size, which is eight people. And we're just getting 
some weird luck here that we're getting other cities or other nations like right next to us. Um, this is the third game in a row where I've had a, another civilization city like within a few tiles of my capital. Uh, we're going to play it out because I like a lot of this start already. I like the extra desert that we have here. And we can use these other civilizations as target practice for our Pitati archers. I hope. Although uh, we obviously know Gaul has his uh, his unique unit already as well. Um, yeah, we're going to play it out. We're going to see what we can do. Hopefully, hopefully this thing goes well. I should have done this already to Congo, and I meant to. I, I Kind of a mistake. I need to send a delegation right away to you, because I don't know if I'm ready to go to war with you. I will at some point, but I don't want you to just sneak up on me and just start destroying my cities before I've had a chance to establish myself. So we're going to try and make friends with him. Uh, it looks like it's too little too late, unfortunately, but we tried. All right, we do have a scout over here, which means there is a barbarian encampment somewhere nearby. We need to start swinging you back up to this direction. And we've got a lot of desert here that we can settle around, but we're going to have to clear out some space from some of these other civilizations, I think, pretty quick and in a hurry. A lot of desert. This is this is a good spot for us and a not so great spot for these other guys. So hopefully that plays to our strengths. I'm a little worried about an early war here that we're not ready for. Um, some nice mountains over here. Another decent city spot over there. I, I'm not even sure what's where to plant cities right now. Um, we can always put a city right in the middle of the desert. The good thing about the um, the Nubian pyramids is that if you put like a triangle of them around your cities where you put, you know, districts in between, I can make those Nubian pyramids pretty strong and help that city to, con you know, continue to grow just fine without, with even though the, it's in the middle of a desert tile. So I think that's still an option for us. No man ever At least we got to name the desert after us because, I mean, come on. It's got to be the Nubian desert. It can't be anybody else's desert. We're the ones in control of the desert. Um, we'll go ahead and do the attack down here, I suppose. This is a really strange start, guys. I need to get you back, because I have a feeling he's coming. Uh, I have no doubts he's coming. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Thankfully, our slinger is going to be out here in just a moment. Um, we need to start working on animal husbandry. We're going to need the Patati archers. About as quickly as we can get them. Uh, okay, what else do we want to go for? Honestly, another slinger or warrior. Probably another slinger, because it's going to be turned into a Patati Archer, hopefully. Is going to be exactly what we need. Get, I mean, the, having the two units makes me feel a little bit better, but it's not It's not going to be great. I mean, we do want to go after him as soon as we can get our Patati Archers. Because I'll put my Patati Archers against his units any day of the week. Um, in fact, let's check his units real quick. I don't actually remember what his bonuses are. They're, they're a warrior type, but I forget exactly how they function. Replaces warrior. Uh, has increased cost and receives plus 10 combat strength when fighting units with a higher base combat strength. So it's just the base. Which our archers will not have a higher base combat strength. So I don't think... Um, I don't think he gets his boost from that. I could be wrong. It may, it may, it may factor in the 30 from the archer, which means he'll bump up to a 30. It could make it a little harder to defeat him than I'm hoping for, but I don't think it will. We'll see. It does make his units long, uh, better for longer though. So go ahead and, um, uh, move you down this way. Just try to get some more vision up around here. We're probably going to come up through here so we can see all of him. I'm not as worried about Congo. I don't think Congo is going to cross the desert too readily. Um, although he did get to name this river. So I think we can um, we can still set along this northern side of, the side of the desert. Maybe circle around to the southern a little bit. But I think we could save Congo for later. Don't really want to move the slinger out right now. It's weak. And although, never mind, we do want to chase this guy down because we'd love to get a kill with him. Major drought. All right, we definitely want to change policies. We want, 
we're gonna go ahead and grab this for now. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and grab God King. We do want a little bit of extra faith coming out. Though we already have, we're gonna have some faith coming in once we get our Nubian Pyramid at some point. What did you take damage from? Oh, did he kill himself against me? To the sl uh, no. Oh yeah, I saw the scout up here, and I thought that was him. But I think he killed his scout against me, and then spawned another scout. I think that's exactly. Actually, I think that's just spawned. I think this is the new scout from the new, the new tile. Um, did we get the boost though? We did. Okay, we got the boost. Go ahead and take the shot. Um, no, stop that. <laughs> I'm going to move this guy over this way just to kind of fend against this side of things while this guy deals with this a little bit. Although at some point we need to move him up there as well. Um, we're going to start working on one of these. Hopefully we can swap over to the other one. I'm going to keep you exploring because if you can get some XP, we'll just get your healing that way. Oh, that's right. I was going to move up and around. Second slinger about to come out. It's going to slow down our overall production. All right. Oh, I didn't think that was... I didn't see that as a flat tile for some reason. Though we need definitely to get out of dodge here. Hmm. This is, this is going to be... Tough. Lowering our food right there. It's not fun. Definitely want to go Slingers Galore wherever we can. Um, I'm going to move you to the woods to be protected. And I'll move this guy into the city to go ahead and get a promotion, but we need to get him held up the rest of the way as well. Garrison's not bad. Getting incendiaries, especially if we're going to be taking out some cities. They're already going to be strong against units. I think this is still the right way to go. I mean, do we just go another Slinger and just start bumping out? I mean, we need the money to be able to bump them up to Patates, though. Which we're not qu quite there yet. I also need to get more cities out. Can't slow that down. The other option, though, is if we take cities, that's how we get cities, right? Instead of settlers, we, we take other people's cities. It is another way to go. I was not expecting a war this early, but I think a war this early is inevitable. Part of me wants to go ahead and declare the war to jump on this guy, but we don't have our Patati Archers yet. So that seems a little dangerous. I'll swing up here, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna take that war too far. Masi, what do you want? You want a uh, train of heavy chariot. I mean, not necessarily at the top of our list of things to do, but I'm not saying it's impossible. He's got so many cities. 20 strength is already pretty strong, but our archers will be able to tear that up relatively good if we can get there. Somebody already destroy this? If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I hmm. okay, a little unexpected. I like how it's, the recommended the symbols looks a little bit different now. Uh, you know, we definitely have to get the archers. We've got to get these rolling as soon as humanly possible. Um, let's move you to the side of things just to see what else is coming. Right, there's another slinger. All right. Uh, I think we have to hold off on range units until we get the patates because I don't know if we're going to be able to upgrade all of these. I don't know the price off the top of my head. I think we can go ahead and get a settler now, though, and fit that in. Three military units that are going to become patati archers soon. Feels relatively okay. 
We only need about half his military strength for me to feel comfortable. And we will have half his military strength once we get the archers upgraded. All right, let's go and bring you back down here. Uh, here he comes. Here he comes. Let's move you up just to be a little bit more def more scary. Let's move you guys back. I'm going to be a little bit more defensive right now. I'd like to pull him into us so we can hit with all of our units. We're a little ways further away from the archer, the patates, than I would like. But there's not much we can do about that. Um, okay, let's keep going up here. Uh, maybe he's not coming right away. I feel like he should be. He probably is, though. I mean, he, he needs to take us out before we get our patates. If we get our patates before he can, you know, do something, then, then he's going to be the ones in trouble at that point. The scout really can kind of do whatever it wants. There's three cities. He might have another one, but that actually might be all he's got right now. Let's fortify you guys, actually. He's got more units over here. He's got a lot of units. We're already at 71. We're already at half his strength. And that's before Patates. So there is that. Hmm. Okay, so this is it. Wow. Would be nice to take all of this, be able to just kind of put cities along this desert here. I mean, we'll put a few cities away from the desert at some point, probably just because... I mean, we can't just ignore that territory, even though we do not get the uh, the um, pyramids. It still feels like probably the right move in the long run. I'm going to try and come through your territory. You might declare war and kill me. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Um, two turns on our archers. We've got some money coming in. I think we can get at least two of them upgraded. I don't remember how much it costs. I think it's, I want to say it's either 40 or 60. There's a settler. So he's about to get another city. Probably up here is my guess. Here he comes. Here comes Congo too, though. Congo could be trouble for us in the sense that if Congo declares war at the same time he does, it's 80. Whole. Oh. Okay. And there's no way we're going to get the thing that decreases that anytime soon because that's way up here. Yeah, that's way, way. This mercenaries. Let's do craftsmanship for a bit. We'll come back to the other one. Um, I mean, we got to get one of these guys upgraded right away. Probably the guy in the city because he's got the promotion already. We'll be able to get another one here in a few turns. Uh, and we'll build some more after that. Writing's already boosted. We'll go ahead and work on that because obviously getting some tech stuff going is useful, but he's, like I said, I think he's going to get another city right up here is my guess. This is getting a little scary, guys. We don't have half the military strength of both of them combined. So if they team up, uh, we're a bit shy on that. And it's not even so much that I'm worried about the strength of the units. It's just I don't have enough units to take out their units quickly. Two more turns, we'll get another archer. We're about to get the settler, which is a little dangerous to try and move out here with all these warriors moving around, but probably going to put it back here, or I could actually put it up here. This might be the right move because we can always do that one later. Alternatively, another one over here would be okay. Actually, right here. I oh, know that's one, two, three. That's three tiles. Um... I don't want to put it on the copper because we can get the bonuses from that. It has to be 
No, I mean, we don't really have another option. Because if we put it anywhere else, yeah, we can put Nubian Pyramids, but they won't be next to the city center, and we don't have anything else over here because of this city. That would have been a great tile. Just one tile too close. We could put it in the desert and move this city down somewhere else. That's technically an option, right? Yeah, we might do something like that. We can even put this city on the floodplains over here because there's desert floodplains we could put the Nubian Pyramid on. But we have to get past his units to be able to do that, so that's not going to be easy. We can put it back down over here behind the copper. I don't know that that's better. I think the worst, the the mo the, the place I would prefer to put it would be right here. I think we're going to try for that. If I group you with the Patati, you're at least going to be a little bit protected. It's a good chance he declares war on us, though, in a second to grab that. I mean, this, this, this one is about as much strategic as it is a good city placement. Yeah, I get this too close to city. Um, but we delete you and we move you. I mean, we can move you onto the desert as well. Uh, other than this city now that just popped up. Oh, kind of gracious. <laughs> There's cities everywhere. I really want this city, though. Do I just settle on the copper and just accept it? Because that technically, one, two, three, four, is four, four away from Novidium. Noviadinum. Noviadinum. Uh, but it allows us to still put this city here, which is four tiles away from Mbanza. I mean, maybe I do this one first, then. Because there's a good chance he could settle up here with us. Although, there's just another target for us to attack at some point. Oh, I don't know. The only good place, I feel like, is the copper tile itself. But that means we'd lose the copper tile itself. I think we kind of have to, though. I want something over here. It's going to have some loyalty issues right away. And then maybe we just do this one. And hope that one's still there. For later. All right, we're going to do another Patati Archer. We've got to get more of these. That's our, that's our bread and butter. All right, you're going to just run away for now. One more turn, we'll get another Patati Archer. I genuinely don't know which of these guys to go after first. I mean, I think I think it's got to be Gaul because he's got the unique unit that's strong right now. Congo's doesn't come along until later, does it? Uh, I keep hitting the wrong button. Um, Congo. It's a classical era, so it's a swordman replacement. So he's going to get strong here in a little bit. I still think our archers against his swordmen are, are going to be okay. I guess I'll upgrade you since you're not in the city. Give you a little bit more strength. How many Batari archers do we think we're going to need for this? A couple. I'd like four. I think four would be comfortable. All right. Not a surprise at all. Like at all, at all. Um, it's a little dangerous to put the city here, but we've, I mean, the settler's just as unprotected, right? And at least this protects the Patati Archer. 
inside it. I mean, we can wreck some units here. Well, I mean, that made our decision, I guess. Good, bad, or indifferent. Congo first, although I have a feeling he's going to declare war on us while we're dealing with Congo. If I if I had to bet, he if he was smart, he would do that. All right, we're going to go ahead and cut in there. I actually don't know how long this video is. I had to piece together a couple different videos. So if this one went a little bit over, that's all right. It's the first video of the new series. If you do like these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel so you can see more of them. Also, I have channel memberships turned on. If you want to be joined and uh, be a member of the channel and help support the channel, that'd be awesome as well. But I do appreciate you, got <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to our first channel member ever, Telrenar. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.